Have you ever had a JPEG file that you got from somewhere that you needed really to have more control over? Have you converted a RAW file from RAW to JPEG and then accidentally deleted your RAW? This is the video for you. Hey, this is Scott Weidenkiewicz, a storyteller with a camera talking about all the things photographers like you and I are thinking about. In this video, I wanna share with you new software from Topaz Lab. Topaz Labs is one of those Lightroom and Photoshop plugins that has become a standalone software. And, you know, I, to be honest, I haven't used Topaz's software in many years, but they're getting into the AI, the artificial intelligence game, just like Photoshop is, Lightroom is, Skyloom is, On One is. So, why not? Why shouldn't they get into the AI game? But what I think is really interesting is the AI that they're introducing is not your typical AI. So let's dive in to JPEG to RAW AI. This is JPEG to RAW AI. And basically what happens is you can drag and drop an image right here. And I'm going to do that. I basically grab an image. Let me show you the image that I grabbed. Now the image that I grabbed is a photo that a friend of mine posted of me on Facebook years ago. And the photo is 116 kilobytes. It has been highly compressed from Facebook, but it was from a digital SLR originally a few years ago. Now I'm gonna drag this image in and you can see it's got a file name like what Facebook would do. You can see here in the processing section, I can actually turn on noise and blur reduction. Now this image actually is soft because of how compressed Facebook made it. So I'm not actually going to do anything to that. Next is the output. You can change where you want it to go, the source folder or a custom folder, a prefix, a suffix for the file name. And then you can choose under file format if you want it to be a DNG raw file or a TIFF. Now I'm going with DNG because that is an actual raw file. It will be smaller in size than a TIFF, but if you really want to, you can actually make it a TIFF and take up more space in your computer. Now, uh, I do want to show you over here, the bottom left is a preview. And if I click on that, and by the way, you can do this in batches. You don't have to just do one by one, but for the sake of this video, I'm just doing one. Now you can see here, I'm going to show you a few things. Uh, right here, you can actually zoom in. If you want to, you can zoom in even more. You can increase the contrast and the, and the brightness of the photos. But what I want to show you is this is the JPEG. And look at the L.L. Bean logo on the sweatshirt, how soft it is. And look what it's doing on the raw preview that it's creating, that the software is creating. And then if I actually, you can see how sharp, you can actually read L.L. Bean. If I was to scroll up, you'll see that again on the original, my face is kind of soft. It's been compressed, right? And if you look at the raw preview that it's creating, my glasses are sharp and you can see the stubble on my face and it's doing a nice job. I'm gonna turn off preview and I'm just gonna hit start. Let me take a moment while we are waiting to just say uh, thank you to Topaz for giving me access to this software. They did not sponsor this video. They just gave me a license key to test out the software and share my thoughts. If you like this video so far, click that subscribe button below right now. I publish new videos every Monday and Thursday, whenever possible. You don't want to miss it. Now let's get back to the video. And what it's going to do is it's going to create that raw file for me automatically. I don't have to do anything. And again, you can do this in batches. You can drag a whole bunch of images and let it do it to all a whole folder of JPEGs if you want. You can see it's going, it takes a little bit of time. It is AI, so it is looking, you know, it's calling home and figuring out, you know, what needs to be done. And now it's, it's done, all right? So let's close out of this and um, take a look. Okay, now here we have two files. Here is the original JPEG. And again, let me open it up. You can see it's 116 kilobytes. And if I was to show you the the, the uh, DNG, the raw file created, it's 6.8 megabytes. Now the computer is actually trying to determine the preview. I'm going to open this up in Photoshop because I have a feeling that because it was a Topaz created raw file that the, the uh, Apple software, the Mac OS, can't actually do the preview of the DNG. So let's go into Photoshop and I'll open the DNG there and let's see what happens. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to drag in my DNG and it's going to try to load it. All right, so it took a little bit of time. I don't know why. Normally, 
raw files are very fast so it could just be that you know that camera raw from adobe photoshop and also that mac os don't have a raw processor for the raw that was created by topaz's software so it might just be that you know that um for Photoshop wise, that's used a generic raw processor, and for Mac OS, it just can't. I, I you know, I don't know what's gonna happen there. But so now we have the uh, the raw file, and again, if I zoom in, you can see there's actually detail here, and I can go ahead now and let's just do this, and I can actually go ahead and adjust it like I would a raw any other raw file. So I can go ahead and adjust my whites and blacks. I could do everything I would and. In theory, I should keep detail because now it created a brand new file for me. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. We're going to open the image. And you can see now this is the full size. It didn't actually make the image larger than what it was on Facebook. The image is the same size as, what, as it was on Facebook. But it did give me more control over it. And it brought back and it brought back sort of, you know, some of the lost pixels some of the lost uh, data from the compression. And if I was to show this like this, you'll see that again, look at the difference, They're the same exact size, but look at the difference between the raw version and the JPEG. So is this software good for sort of enlarging your images from a JPEG? No, it's not, but it is good at bringing back details. So maybe what you need to do then is to go into Topaz's Gigapixel AI, which is intended to enlarge images using artificial intelligence. And hopefully I'll have a video for you on that in the future. All right, so there you have it. Uh, I, I'm liking the software. I'm glad that Topaz is getting to AI that's really useful for certain things. I am. I wish that it could enlarge a little bit, but, and I, I think the, the whole raw preview thing and the slowness that came from loading in Photoshop is something that could get worked around, like Topaz can partner with Apple to get the preview in there. They could get a, a raw processor built into Camera Raw with Adobe. There's things that could be done. But in the meantime, it's working pretty well. I'm, I'm pleased. What do you think of the software? Is this something that you would use? Comment and let me know. Thanks for watching.